from KSAT 12. The news at noon starts right now. High powered weapons, stolen cars and wanted people now all in the hands of a team led by the Bear County Sheriff's Office. They found all of that after serving a warrant at a home early this morning. It's in the Five Palms neighborhood on a street called Port Victoria. Katrina Weber is at the scene and tells us they believe this may be connected to some major criminal activity. Sheriff Javier Salazar says what they found inside this house most likely was not going to stay here. He believes at least some of the weapons were headed south of the border, possibly to end up in the hands of cartel members. Bear County Sheriff's deputies, along with other local and federal officers, spent hours combing through the house in the 9200 block of Port Victoria. They had arrived around 6 this morning, then began surrounding the house and calling for people inside to come out. The sheriff says they were acting on a warrant, mainly looking for guns, and he says that's just what they found, about a dozen of them. We did find several weapons that we believe to be equipped with switches uh, that would make them fully automatic weapons. A lot of those weapons that contained the switches, that had the switches attached, uh, are believed to be stolen. We saw detectives carrying out some of those weapons. Again, Salazar says he believes some of those guns could have been sold to cartels in Mexico. He says investigators also found several stolen cars, as well as a small amount of marijuana and a bag of gear that belonged to a school police officer and had been stolen in a recent car burglary. Three people were arrested. The sheriff says this investigation is not over and it may extend even beyond this one house. Reporting from the southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A lot of noise and a lot of light. Strong storms rolled through the area last night, leaving behind piles of hay and even some downed tree limbs. We've got the story from our viewers on KSAT Connect. They sent us a lot of pictures of what was going on in the area. You can see the hail and how about that picture right over the tower of that lightning and we've got more pictures to show the damage just across the street at Central Catholic High School. A tree limb down right there. That shows you how strong those winds were as the storm blew through San Antonio. Some great shots of the lightning across the sky. That was from Sky Watcher Oscar. And once again, here's a shot of that, that tower and the, the lightning. It's a great looking picture, a little dangerous, but it's a great looking picture. Here's one, a trampoline overturned in the backyard of Land Fam 98. So we know that the, the winds were strong enough to do that. Here's a couple of pictures of some of the hail that fell. This one shows you that this particular piece of hail, about a quarter size. So we got some decent sized hail coming in. And this is from all over the area here in, in San Antonio and South Texas as this thing rolled through. There's a whole cup of hail right there. And then look at the deck. This thing is covered in hail. This is from Petranco house. So they had that brief downpour and then they had all that hail and there's a whole pile of it right there. So not sure exactly um, if they piled that up or if that hail fell in that pile right there, more than likely they piled that up, but that's still a lot of hail on the deck. Here's some more hail showing you just the size, how big it was. Once again, about a quarter size. We had some dime size hail up to a quarter size hail, some more damage. Fortunately, nothing serious, no major damage, but we did have some bound tree limbs. And you can see this is kind of wrecked some pool furniture in the back of this house. You can see the storage area a little, little crooked after that wind came through. So you can tell just from all these pictures and all the stories that our folks who were viewing last night showed just how strong the storm was. There's some more hail on a deck and some more hail in, in the hands. That's a lot of hail that fell last night all over San Antonio and South Texas. Once again, we appreciate all these pictures to our KSAT Connect, and here's some video as it was coming down hard last night. Rain and hail, a lot of folks in our area lucky to see some of this. Unfortunately for some of the folks, they might have seen a little too much. <laughs> that's, that's right, and now the weather also kept fire crews on their toes. At least two homes caught fire after being struck by lightning. The fire department says lightning caused a fire to break out on Bray's View, not far from Blanco Road and Warsbach Parkway on the north side. That caused smoke to come of a dryer in the home. Now the flames did spread to an attic. Thankfully, no one was hurt. However, about 12 people will be displaced for now. And the other lightning strike fire happened on the northwest side near West Hausman Road and I-10. Firefighters arrived to smoke showing from a house. Now crews were able to knock down the fire that was mostly in the attic. No one was hurt. 
All right, outside with live cam, you never know. We went through that last night by that picture right there. It looks like calm, just a few puffy clouds and some blue sky. But it was a very interesting evening for a few hours, Justin. Yeah, we had severe storms that uh, blasted through San Antonio. Wind gusts of close to 70 miles per hour in some cases. And that's why we saw some of those down trees and, of course, the hail. Fairly sizable. We're still looking at some damage around San Antonio, but most of that was caused by the winds. On the good side of things, we got some decent rain, about an inch downtown, 1.29 at the airport. We picked up 0.65 down in Lytle, Elmendorf, 0.85, Stinson, 0.83. So again, one of the big winners, over two inches of rain there. The heaviest of the rain fell across far east Texas and places like Temple that picked, over, uh, picked up over six inches of rain. It averaged right around an inch here in San Antonio, but that has all moved out. As we look outside, we do have some clouds on the back side of the storm system, seeing a few clouds roll in, but these will not contain any rain. Uh, we showed you some of the damage photos there. We'll have a few more on our uh, KSAC Connect coming up. And as uh, we look at the forecast for today, all day long, gusty winds, gusts to 35 miles per hour, potentially later this afternoon. And it will be a chilly start tomorrow. Uh, we'll see temperatures get down to the 50s. We're going to talk all about this forecast and the rest of the week. It does get warmer. We'll have some more humidity too, but will that lead to some rain? Your seven day forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. In other news, a woman is recovering after she was shot by a man. She stabbed on the northwest side. It happened last night around nine on Vance Jackson near 410. Police tell us the man and woman were arguing in a parking lot. We're told at some point the man shot the woman after she stabbed him. The man drove off and called police and the woman ran away to get help. And overnight, a man was arrested after police say he stabbed a tow truck driver. It happened on the north side of town a little after midnight. It was on the access road of I-10 near Wurzbach Road. Police tell us that the driver was stopped at a light and rolled down a window for a man who walked up to his vehicle. We're told the man then stabbed that driver in the arm. The driver went to a nearby HEB to call for help. Officers approached the suspect and the suspect pulled out a knife and we're told he was stunned with a taser weapon and then detained. A heads up, SAPD's training academy is conducting training detonations. They started at 11 this morning and will wrap up around 1 this afternoon. So if you're near Loop Southeast 410 in Morrison, you can hear a lot of noise. It's likely just this training exercise. And single parents attending Texas A&M San Antonio getting some much needed support. In January, the university opened the Young Jaguars program. It's a free after school child care for students attending classes, needing tutoring or doing other school campus related work. Mothers who are taking advantage of the program say not having to worry about child care for a few hours has been a blessing. Honestly, probably the best thing that's ever happened to me because it's been stress free. I come to class three times, sometimes four times a week, and I'm just able to come and drop her off without having to figure out, you know, who can take care of her within the family. As the university started working on the free child care program after professors noticed students were showing up to their with their children to class because they couldn't find child care. Later on this morning, the university will host the ribbon cutting for the on-campus child care program, and we hope to bring you that later on in this hour. Hey, the Spurs try to finish out the season on a serious roll. Got a good win last night in Memphis. Welcome back for National Autism Awareness Month. A San Antonio mother shares how her son inspired her to create a safety toolkit for parents with children with autism. This noon, we have a look at how the nonprofit Any Baby Can helped shine light on the importance of fire safety for people with autism. We have the locks, which is very important so that they don't get outside of the house. Um, there are so many uh, instances where children, they will get out and they don't have any way to come and say like, hi, I'm so-and-so and this is where I live. Abby Eckmark teamed up with the nonprofit Any Baby Can to create this safety toolbox kit. This safety toolbox is for any parent or first responder that wants it's for their children uh, with special needs so that they have a way of communication. It was put together in honor of her six-year-old son, Rudy Alejos. In August of 2011, I was in a fire with my son and I tried to take us both out and he, 
he died in the fire. Rudy had autism spectrum disorder. I have so many people over the years, it's been over 10 years now that they come to me and they say, because of your story, I started talking to my kids about uh, a fire plan. Abby says the nonprofit Any Baby Can has helped in many ways, and she is now getting ready to give back by participating in the 20th annual Walk for Autism San Antonio. For me, I think it's the it's the aftermath. My family gets together, we go to the cemetery and we visit him and um, but I, I, I feel his presence. The walk is taking place on April 20th from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Palo Alto College. There will be an area where kids can play dedicated to Abby's son, Rudy's playground. The walk for autism is coming up and for my family, it's not just a walk, it's a day of remembrance. And we want to keep conversations like this going. That's why we will be hosting a KSAC Community Town Hall next week called Understanding Autism. Guests will be joining us to answer any questions you may have, help raise awareness, and promote acceptance. You can tune into the Town Hall next Tuesday at 2 p.m. on KSAT.com, KSAT Plus, or the KSAT YouTube channel. The Town Hall will then be followed by the Walk for Autism on the 20th at Palo Alto College. The 12th Annual San Antonio Book Festival returns to downtown this weekend, and all week we are hearing from some of the authors who are going to be attending that festival. Megan Kimball was interested in writing at a young age, and that led to her becoming a freelance journalist in Austin. Kimball will be attending the book festival for the first time, and she's going to be speaking on her new book, City Limits, Infrastructure, Inequality, and the Future of America's Highways. The book, which just published last week, focuses on why Texas highways always seem full with cars, despite how much spending goes into widening highways and streets. The problem with in Texas is that the Texas Department of Transportation is constitutionally required to spend about 97% of its funding on roadways. Kimball says decades of evidence proves cars will fill up highways when more lanes are added. And she says the solution, public transportation. People are much more space efficient than cars are, and so you can move a lot, a lot of people much more efficiently in a bus or train than you can individually in cars. You're going to have a chance to hear from Kimball at the San Antonio Book Festival. That's once again this Saturday, April 13th, the Central Library at the UTSA Southwest Campus, the day-long family-friendly event. It is free for all attendees, and you can learn more information about the authors attending and the festival by heading over to KSAT community page, ksat.com. And a look outside with live camp, 68 degrees, just in some warmer days ahead. Yes, uh, today's actually going to be quite comfortable. We'll have mid 70s, but you're right. As we head towards weekend, 80s are back in the picture. So is humidity. We'll enjoy a couple days here where it is uh, going to be pretty nice. The aquifer got a good bump last night thanks to the rain. We're up eight tenths of a foot to 638.6. We like seeing that, although 638.6 is still not a great number. It's at least moving in the right direction. Oak. Amazingly jumped up today, 2008-90. Molds are moderate at 716. Pecan came up too. It's at 110 and moderate. We'll take a look at what's ahead. We've got some more damage photos for you. And we'll look at that seven-day forecast as well. In just a few minutes. This is always the exciting time of the hour. Just one of the exciting times. Is yes. There's, it, there's excitement through the entire 12 to one hour, but this you is know, pretty it, exciting. It's too. nice to know that we're kind of like the highlight of your hour right there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have thought it was Justin, but thank you. Yeah. Because <laughs> you don't get that laugh that Fiona has from Justin. I mean, Fiona, like, she, she, <laughs> see what I'm saying? I mean, you know, if you can't love okay. that, then, you know. No. Anyway. No, no. All right. The you question know, of the day. I'll tell you something, though. He is like a sibling to me. Yes. Oh, it, it's like oh, it's, yeah. it's like the older brother that she never wanted. So <laughs> and today is National <laughs> Siblings Day. You showed up one day. Do I? I said you just showed up one day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, all right. National okay. Siblings Day. You guys have brothers and sisters? Yes. Two sisters. Two, you got two sisters? Yes. No? I got, uh, I got some. I don't, I, I don't know. A couple here, one there, I think. I don't know. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Tiffany, are you, are your sisters are where do you fall in line yeah. with the th three Oldest, of you? Middle? Uh, no, I'm the youngest. Yeah, oh, I'm the youngest the too. I'm the baby. Oh, oh I, we have two babies. I here. knew we okay. I knew we had that that yeah. that kindred spirit yes, there, twins. Tiffany. Because I'm the yeah, it's like it's like twins. Yeah, because I'm the youngest of four. I have two older oh, sisters. Oh man, and you're older spoiled brother. rotten then, aren't you? 
Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, no, but I deserve you it. You can so. tell he was the baby. I was the third <laughs> of tell. four, and I was the baby for 11 years. So Ooh. figure that one out. Yeah. Uh huh. So yeah, the, that the, was rough. Yeah. yeah. The next one that came, you were just like, I, I was. I was no longer the the spoiled child. <laughs> okay. I will take your mind off of that, so David. Much is Thanks. Explained. And and I bet I can make David go. Oh. Uh oh. Look oh, at no, what we have go, on the show today. Look at that rib. <laughs> That's not right. I know. You're just not fair, man. I know. Go ahead. That. Oh, don't even. Not, not yeah, in front of me. Yeah, he's doing it. Is he going to do that while I'm watching? Yeah. It just, <laughs> it just falls off the bone, man. He's been I've been dying, I've been dying to grab minutes, this David. thing. Yeah. I had to come I'm up with some excuse Sears. to eat this. Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, Fiona, make sure he's got a napkin to wipe, wipe that up later. Yeah, well, he is the youngest. Uh, so uh, yes. <laughs> Fiona's oh. not even bothered. She's just like. Yeah, it's Mike. Ooh. Everything on this show is wash and wear. All right, well, that's enough of that. We'll see y'all after a while. I can't watch this anymore. We're, we're just, it's time for John. I can't, that's just, that's Well, it right. is lunchtime, that's so. That's not right to do that to me. <laughs> Honestly, man, I'm with you, David. That's, that's not right. That's just unfair. Man. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> Ribs. Yeah. Uh, we got uh, another photo to show you from our KSAC Connect. It was Whoa. a wild night. This is a huge tree. This came yeah. down. Now, we didn't get a location on it. It says San Antonio. Uh, but they said a huge tree uprooted by neighbor's house. And we're seeing more and more of these photos come in. So we know that last night those winds were incredibly strong. They've got to be to do damage like this. Uh, and let's take a look at some of the uh, reports that we have. Uh, these are coming in from the uh, National Weather Service. Now, there's probably more than what you see here, but these are some of the official reports that have uh, come into their office. And we'll click on a few here. Uh, this was a report of hail near Seguin, uh, about 1.3 inches in diameter there around Schertz. Uh, we had some thunderstorm wind damage there, tree limbs down in Universal City. Uh, we'll take a look at this report. This is... Uh, a wind gust measured at 67 miles per hour. So yeah, that's going to do damage like what you just saw. Uh, we also had a report of 62 mile per hour gust at the airport. Uh, these are hail reports. You got hail reports out west and wind reports down towards Divine. Uh, but they're all kind of similar, about quarter size hail and then those wind gusts 60 plus. And that has resulted in some of those trees coming down, unfortunately. I think the wind was the bigger issue than the hail, but either way, it was loud. And uh, yeah, they were, uh, they were severe storms that came through here. They have since cleared out. Now on the backside, we're getting some cloud cover coming in from the north and west. Don't have to worry about this, though. It will not carry any rain with it, but uh, uh, we will see some clouds from time to time or early this afternoon before these just kind of dissipate. Now, you can see the low here. Uh, rotating counterclockwise, a little bit of rain on the back side of it around Dallas, but the really heavy stuff is here across the southeast and the deep south. So New Orleans over to Pensacola, Florida. This is where we have tornado watch boxes in effect, and this line of storms means business. This is the same line, by the way, that came through San Antonio, but now it's really pushing east and out ahead of it. There's going to be some more strong storms, unfortunately. The Storm Prediction Center has that severe weather kind of outlined right around Mobile over to uh, parts of Alabama up to Birmingham. That's kind of the area that will be under the gun here next several hours over to Panama City. And that's where those tornado watch boxes are in place. Now on the back side of this low, you got the gusty winds, dry air here across Texas, and there is a high fire danger for those west of I-35. Red flag warnings in effect there. That impl includes places like Del Rio, where the fire danger will be very high today. You can see some of those clouds we just showed you. So not a perfectly sunny day. But nice nonetheless, 67 at the airport, 66 in New Braunfels, 67 in Seguin, low 60s for Bernie and Kerrville. And the other side to all this is, yes, we are getting some very strong winds. Gusts now to 25 to 35 miles per hour, gusting to 32 at Port S.A., gusting to 22 at Bernie, 28 at the airport. And these kind of wind gusts are going to be pretty common through dinner time. In fact, winds may even pick up a little bit before they start to diminish as we get into tonight. And those winds should eventually start to lay down as we get into tonight into tomorrow morning. So our high temperature today, somewhere around 74. Not bad, certainly cooler and less humid than yesterday. And as we look at the extended forecast, we'll go 52 tonight into tomorrow morning. So maybe a light jacket tomorrow morning, but it gets up to 83 by the afternoon. 82 on Friday, 84 Saturday, 85 on Sunday. We'll get back into the humidity by that point. And then a lot more clouds to start next week and maybe a small chance of rain by Tuesday. I saw some of our coworkers eating outside lunch because it's like beautiful right now.
David, you want to go out and check? And no, because every time I go out there, nobody out there. You always send me out there, and there's never anybody there. So I saw it. I saw it. Send, I can confirm. Send I can... her this time if she knows there's somebody. We got confirmation. We got confirmation. Got confirmation. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks <Justin>. Tiff. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Hey, the missions home opener kind of a dud last night. When we come back, we'll have highlights from that. The San Antonio Brahmins are winning and losing all at the same time, we'll explain. In Memphis, maybe left a ticket for Elvis, who would enjoy Victor Wimbanyama because he got them all suck up around the league. Taking on the Grizzlies last night, the Spurs struggling in the first quarter until Devontae Graham to the rescue. There's a three from Devontae. Letting it fly from the wing. Set it's under trail by nine after one, and it's Wimby with the pass to Blake Wesley. Spurs closing the gap. And then later on in transition, nice pass. Mamu with the slam, the corner. How about another three from Mamu? Got it going inside and out. All right, go to the second half. Spurs take control of the game. Wimby, big slam like that. Later in the third, Memphis gets the steal. It is a three on one. Uh-oh, that's not good. That's, but watch Wimby, watch Wimby, watch this. Uh, made him, eh, give it a shot. All right, that's good, that's all right, all right. That's good, Spurs going to win though. Here's the final, 102 to 87. Wimben Yama led the way, 18 points, six assists, three games left on the schedule. Thunder, Nuggets, Pistons. Here's Julian Champigny after the game last night. Well, obviously some guys are out, so the role kind of expands, um, as, as well as the, the playing time. But coach and my teammates have been telling me the same thing all year, just you know, shoot the ball when it comes, shoot it. And some games it's scoring a lot, and some games it's playing defense, you know, so end of the season, it's kind of time to, you know, just play and have fun and, and show a little more of your game. So that's kind of what's going on right now. Um, so, yeah. All right, it was the home opener for the San Antonio Misses last night already. 3-0 and on the season, hosting East Arkansas, the Naturals at the Wolf. It's game one of a six-game series. The Naturals got right to work. Gillian Schrom with a sacrifice fly to right. Javier Vaz tags up from third. That's so deep he can trot home. That was easy. All right. We go to the top of the fourth. Luca Tresh goes deep. That's going over the left field wall. Pretty windy out there, so that might have helped it out a little bit. Missions dropped their first game of the season, 6-3. to three. And San Antonio Brahmas are 2-0 and to start the UFL season, but they have suffered a big loss. Star-studded kicker Donald De La Haye suffered multiple fractures in his neck when he was trying to make a tackle. Meanwhile, center Alex Millette, who caught a fake punt touchdown in week one, was placed on the IR, but didn't expect it to miss the whole season, according to the OC, A.J. Smith. By the way, the Brahmins are offering a flash buy one, get one ticket offer for their upcoming game. Visit the Brahmins social media to access that big offer. But a kicker with multiple fractures in his neck, that's why kickers probably don't make too many tackles. <laughs> Afraid of getting hurt like that. That's, we that's hope rough. He, he gets better soon. All right, now the White House wants to make changes to your drinking water. A look at the new standards, which include filtering out something found in about half of all the drinking water in the country. And welcome back. Wanted to show you some of the damage from all over San Antonio, not just San Antonio, but all over South Texas from that storm that blew through San Antonio last night. You can see, let's start out here with Katie. Look at this whole side of this building just completely demolished and brought down to the ground. And then you've got Port Arthur roof blown off. And then here's some flooding in Kirbyville. You can see the car right there all the way up to nearly the hood. And then Jacksonville also had a lot of flooding. And, and that was looks like at uh, one of those dog shelters. So the animals are having to deal with all this flooding as well. So that looks like it's inside that building. So a lot of things going on last night all over San Antonio and South Texas. There's more trees down in Port Arthur. Just totally crushed that house right there. This is absolutely amazing that this happened last night. And high water rescue in Kirbyville, northeast of Beaumont, that's the area that saw some severe flooding. Emergency crews responded to at least 10 water rescues, one creek and a major flood stage after rising 10 feet in just six hours. And check out the animal shelter. We just showed you that right there. Texas is in need of fosters because heavy rains caused flooding inside that shelter. That left some dogs standing in the water in their kennels. You know, that can't be good for those little guys. Rescue workers say all the dogs are okay, although this happened before. The shelter says it's the worst it's been in years and some of the incoming water is contaminated. Those were incredible images, Justin. Right now, different picture, of course, but 
Yeah, it's uh, much quieter here. We are in the thick of severe weather season, though, and things will probably ramp up a little bit more before we uh, see that pattern quiet down. So we're not done with severe weather yet. Uh, there's none in the seven day forecast, but my point is uh, rest of April into May, we certainly will see more of that. Uh, and so, you know, have your plans ready in case there are warnings and things like that. And last night certainly was one of those nights where uh, it definitely was uh, busy and loud and uh, yes, we did get some damage too. Here's a look at the time lapse. We had clear skies earlier. Clouds are starting to funnel in from the north and west. These are not clouds that contain any rain though. Uh, so it'll just be a partly cloudy next few hours. And honestly, I think this cloud deck you see here from Fredericksburg down to San Antonio, New Braunfels, it'll break up a little bit more. We'll see clear skies tonight as this storm system that's off to our north and east departs the area and gets out of here. Our forecast today, 73 at 3 o'clock, 74 at 4 p.m., 75 at 5 o'clock, and then we'll dip down into the uh, 60s tonight. Uh, gets pretty chilly by 1 a.m., 59, and in fact, we'll dip down into the low 50s by tomorrow morning. Coming up here uh, in just a few minutes, David Sears has got some questions about hail sizes. We're going to discuss in just a little bit, guys. All right, thanks, Justin. Now, the Biden administration is setting new regulations on the amount of forever chemicals that can be found in drinking water. This new standard will require water utilities to filter out five of the forever chemicals, also called PFAS, that are currently found in half of the drinking water in the U.S. Now, PFAS has been linked to a number of health issues, including cancer, heart disease, and reproductive problems. The CDC says they're found in the bloodstream of nearly 97% of Americans. They're often used to help products repel water and oil, but linger in the environment and human body. Environmentalists say the ruling is monumental in protecting people's health. It's the first federal standard of its kind. And the Labor Department releasing its latest inflation report today. Inflation ticked up 3.5% in March, more than economists expected, which is not great news for Americans' wallets. ABC's Rena Roy has more on what this means. Inflation is up yet again, and it's hotter than expected. The Labor Department's latest report saying prices are 3.5% higher compared to a year ago. Housing prices continue to go up. Rent was one of the big reasons why prices were significantly higher or higher than expected in this report. Same thing goes with gas prices. Month over month, prices increased 0.4%, exceeding a 0.3% expectation. These higher than expected numbers fueling fears that the Federal Reserve can no longer cut interest rates in June, which means the cost of borrowing likely won't be going down anytime soon. Those rates for a mortgage, car loan and your credit card APRs could stay higher for longer. So when you think about the things you spend on your day to day life, monthly expenses continue to tick up higher. And that's one of the reasons why we're seeing this persistently high inflation. Obviously, that is very frustrating for households at home when they're looking at their budgets. Moody's Analytics saying Americans are spending two hundred and twenty seven dollars more a month compared to a year ago on things like gas and housing. But prices for oil, utilities and cars are down. Well, food prices didn't go up by as much last month, but they are still high. The problem still kind of that underlying trend with those day to day expenses still high. Inflation has been front and center since the economy has started recovering from the pandemic. This report coming after two worse than expected ratings on inflation. Prices have cooled from a peak of about 9 percent, but inflation still higher than the Fed's target rate of 2 percent. If this rough patch comes amid strong economic performance, despite high interest rates meant to cool inflation, employers hiring more than 300,000 workers last month blowing past expectations. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Millions of low-income Americans are still on the verge of losing most of their government benefit for high-speed Internet. The Affordable Connectivity Program, or ACP, set to run out of funding by the end of April. Congress has not yet approved new funding for the program. The ACP provides monthly $30 discounts on Internet service for low-income households. The FCC also ordered Internet providers to begin informing customers about the potential end of that program. The FCC is trying to make it easier to shop for Internet plans. Starting Wednesday, it's requiring new labels 
that detail what you can expect to pay, typical download speeds, and information about the internet provider's policies, listed in the same way you see nutrition labels on packaged foods. The agency is hoping this transparency will give consumers basic information about different broadband options in a way that's easy to understand and bring some of the fine print such as early termination fees and data caps into focus. The so-called consumer broadband labels will be offered both online and in stores in both English and Spanish. The price of a postage stamp going up again in the next few months. The U.S. Postal Service filed a notice with the Postal Regulatory Commission on Tuesday, the post office is recommending the price goes from first class mail forever stamps 68 cents to 73 cents. Stamp prices already increased this January. If the change is approved, it would take effect on July 14th. The Postal Service also recommended price adjustments for special service products, including certified mail and money order fees. However, there will be no price increase for post office box rental fees. The commission will still have to review and be in favor of the changes before they can go into effect. There are still some things out there that can make people put their phones down. Unfortunately, it may not come around for a few years. Coming up. Welcome back. Popular big box retail store Target is introducing new technology to combat theft at its self-checkout registers. The technology is called TrueScan. Now the cameras will be able to detect items on scanners and anything unscanned. Shoppers will get audio and visual cues when they don't scan items properly. Now TrueScan will also help Target track those who repeatedly fail to scan their items even after being prompted. The new technology will be rolled out to all stores this year. The report comes after Target announced last month it would limit self-checkout to 10 items or less at most of its stores beginning on March 17th. Cloud computing service Cloudfare tells us that it saw a significant drop in internet traffic during Monday's total solar eclipse. Those drops were the biggest in locations that had the best views. Here in Texas, we saw a 15% drop in internet traffic. However, other states like Ohio saw a 50% dip. But even areas that only had partial views still saw people taking breaks from their computers and phones to a lesser extent. A look outside and 69 degrees, but going back to the eclipse, mm -hmm. the birds stopped chirping for a moment. It's weird, right? It was a moment. It was the it moment. It was a real moment. Uh, yeah, and now we are back into the sun. Uh, and temperatures are starting to warm up today, at least a little bit. 67 so far. 57 was the low this morning. 79 and 57 are the averages. Well, actually be below average when it comes to the high today. The record is 95, set back in 1963. Thankfully, nothing like that in the forecast. But we do have some warmth headed our way. Another look coming up. All right, so earlier we've been, in basically all hour, we've been showing you pictures of the weather last night, a lot of pictures of hail. So that got me thinking, because some people had like quarters in their hand and hail and dime. And so who came up with the scale, the hail scale? I mean, we use fruit, we use money, we yeah, use sure. like ping pong ball. Who came up with this? Well, it's the National Weather Service, but it's a very good question. I'm glad you asked that because we do get that uh, question on occasion. And National Weather Service came up with it. And basically, it's a list of items that we can you know, that are kind of standard sizes that everyone kind of has on hand that we can use to measure it. And we ask when you send in the pictures of the hail to put it up against something so we can uh, see the size. And you can basically use anything, but we prefer things like quarters or dimes or ping pongs, grapefruits. Uh, those are the, <laughs> those are included in the list. And I want to show you a picture. This is uh, quarter. There. There you so go, you can quarter. see these are just a little bit smaller than a quarter. And a quarter is kind of the threshold where we start to talk about severe hail. Once it gets to about quarter size and larger, that's when it can start to do some damage, especially if it's wind driven. And we saw some of that last night. Thankfully, uh, the hail didn't get much bigger than this. We had a couple of pictures where the hail was a little larger than this, uh, but that was about it. So the hail damage wasn't so much a problem as the wind damage, and we showed you some of the pictures earlier of the trees that came down last night with some of those winds gusting 60 miles and over. Now, the good side to all of this 
is we got some rain. 9.96 inches now for the year. We're 3.21 inches above average. It's been a while since we've had above average rainfall for this long, but we're still doing okay. Del Rio, not as well. 60.64 uh, with a two inch deficit there. Del Rio's really missed out on a lot of the rain, and that's why the fire danger is so high out there. And obviously, Austin uh, also in good shape after they got some rain and severe weather yesterday. Beautiful blue skies mixed with a few clouds at the moment. 67. Dew point is at 47 and falling. West northwesterly winds at 17. And those have been right in that range, 15 to 20 miles per hour, gusting a little bit higher than that throughout the uh, afternoon. We'll continue to see that. Uh, this is one of our computer models. It does show winds actually picking up maybe just a little bit more. Gust to 32 here in San Antonio around 4 o'clock. Gusting to near 40 in Kerrville. Gusting to 37 in Uvalde and gusting to 30 in Gonzales. So it's windy for everybody. Uh, but as we get into this evening, yes, it's still breezy around 7 o'clock, but I'd say by 10 o'clock you'll start to see these winds subside. These numbers will come down and it will be far less windy tonight going into tomorrow. Now with the wind and that lack of rainfall I just showed you in Del Rio, this is the fire threat today from the Texas A&M Forest Service, and it shows extreme fire threat. Uh, you've got a very high fire threat, Eagle Pass up to Brackenville, and even all the way to San Antonio. We're talking high to moderate fire risk, which as we say, if the fire gets started, it's going to spread quickly. We've got a lot of fuel out there, and these gusty winds would carry it right along, so be awful careful. 74 at 4 o'clock today, 75. That's our high right around 5 p.m., 70 at 8 p.m., and then we dip down into the 60s tonight and eventually 50s by tomorrow morning. Uh, the dew point trend, uh, this kind of really tells the story over the next several days. Uh, dew points are fairly low today. They drop lower tomorrow, and then they start to build. So Friday is still a comfortable day, but by Saturday and Sunday, you'll start to feel the humidity. And I think there's enough humidity there to where clouds begin to build in Sunday morning. And certainly by next week, it's going to be muggy in the mornings, humid in the afternoons. The question is, does that lead to some rain? And the short answer is not really. Uh, we have a small chance on Tuesday, 20%, but so far, that's about all we got. So this is a quieter pattern. 83 tomorrow, 82 on Friday. We do get some chilly mornings, and then those morning lows start to build uh, into the 60s to near 70. Look for a warm weekend, an even warmer start to next week. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The 12th annual San Antonio Book Festival returns to downtown this weekend and all week we are hearing from some of the authors attending the festival. Case at 12 producer Haley Powers introduces us to stories from a podcast that was turned into a book. From the podcast studio to your hands. Worth repeating tells the everyday stories of San Antonians living in our city. So most of the people in the book are either from San Antonio or or current, currently residents, so I think it's just sort of surprising the kinds of stories that people here in town have have lived through. Paul Flav founded the Worth Repeating podcast in 2015. One episode features seven storytellers in seven minutes, and there are seven episodes a year. After a few years of the show, Flav, along with colleagues Tori Pohl and Bergen Streetman, took 40 of those stories and turned them into Worth Repeating the book. It's really runs the gamut of all kinds of things that you see in San Antonio and really shows us as like an international city that it's very culturally diverse. This will be the first time Flav, Poole, and Streetman will attend the San Antonio Book Festival as authors and they're excited to help tell the stories of our city. So I'm excited about that, just getting it in front of a new audience, talking about it and sort of dispelling like any like nervousness that people have about live storytelling. It's going to be a great festival. I can't wait to be there. Get to be with these guys. It'll be fun. You have the opportunity to meet the Worth Repeating Author Trio Saturday, April 13 at the San Antonio Book Festival. The festival will take place at the Central Library in UTSA Southwest Campus and is free for all attendees. You can learn more about the authors attending by heading to our website, ksat.com. Haley Powers, KSAT 12 News. It looks like a fun event. Yeah, it does. A lot of great stories. You, you can toss the essay live because, you know, I, <laughs> Mike is just, I don't know. He's that, probably got a mouthful of ribs right now. He can't know, talk either. So I don't know I'm yeah. yeah, that's all he's done since we saw you last. Oh, it is not. Well, is look he? at how much is left. I did not. Oh. No, no, no. Come on now. And, and Ron, Ron can vouch for me. This is the man who is, is I mean, just literally you hear about pitmasters. He is a master because those, the meat falls off the bone. Anyway, go to Point Barbecue. What are we making today? I'm, I'm so thinking ribs right now. So. Today we have our smoked elote cup. 
So okay. we. Okay. Now that is just layers and layers of yum yum right there, right? Yes. And it all starts with that foundation. The foundation of the cream corn that you put on the pit and let it smoke. Wow. So not just the smoked meat on top of that, but smoked cream corn. I can't waste it. If it's anything like the ribs, let me tell you, this is going to be fantastic. You need something to wash that down. Of course, Fiesta Central is right here at Market Square. La Familia Cortez and Victoria Cardoso. You're making up some good refreshments for us, right? Yes. So for this month of April, we're going to be featuring two drinks, the Piña Picosa and the Desert Sandia. And look at that right there. Look at all that color. Oh, I'm, we'll debate on which one's going to go best with that cream corn. So, Are right. you ready for some Fiesta food? Yeah. It's kind of, kind of a warm up this mm -hmm. weekend here on the South Side. David Martinez, Texas Sugar Daddies. Yes. What do we got here? So we're having Taste of the South Side right off of 1135 Mission Road, we're going to have your San Antonio snacks, uh, Southside snacks available, the Pickle Loco. Pickle it's Loco. Be our favorite. And it all benefits a great cause. We'll tell you Ford about that. Academy. Okay, and we also chat with an author, a local author, that of course wrote a book uh, from her dog's point of view. Yep, and we're going to hear from her and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live.